On the evening of February 24, 1986, 29-year-old nurse Sherry Rasmussen was found by her husband lying dead on the living room floor. Her face was severely beaten and disfigured to the point that she was unrecognizable, and the injuries were consistent with being hit with a muzzle and butt plate of a gun. She also had three gunshot wounds to the chest that were disclosed as the official cause of death, with the medical examiner asserting that any one of the three bullets could have killed her. Perhaps the most disturbing discovery during the autopsy was that most most of Sherry's injuries were inflicted upon her after she was killed, which was concluded due to the lack of hemorrhaging and inflammation of the injuries. This included most of the victim's facial injuries and even a bite mark on her left forearm. Even after Sherry had taken her last breath, the assailant was still inflicting an inconceivable amount of damage to her body. She was buried in a closed casket seven days later. The homicide detectives assigned to the case immediately associated Sherry's murder with multiple break-ins that had occurred that same night on the same street. Another woman had even been assaulted and was able to give a description of two assailants, and this description became the sole focus of the investigation into Sherry's murder. The prime suspects were now two middle-aged Latino males of medium height and build. They were never found, and the case went unsolved for 23 years. By 2009, crime in Los Angeles had declined enough from its earlier levels that detectives began looking into cold cases to increase their clearance rates, which is when the Rasmussen files resurfaced. It stood out from the rest as new methods of genetic analysis discovered that the DNA found at the crime scene pointed to a single female suspect. The two previous male suspects were then invalidated along with the original theory of a burglary gone wrong. The investigation into Sherry Rasmussen's murder was then reopened, and the newly appointed criminal investigators started from scratch. It was soon discovered that a statement given by Sherry's father, of whom he thought to be the prime suspect, was quickly brushed to one side, as the person in question was a serving LAPD cop from the exact department who were investigating the case. The person in question was a woman by the name of Stephanie Lazarus. She was a 25-year-old police officer at the time, who had been with the force for two years. She had dated Sherry's husband, John Rutten, in an on-and-off relationship throughout college and for a short time after. It was even discovered that John had slept with Lazarus after he became engaged, and the two even dated for a while after Sherry's murder. She was now a 25-year veteran of the police force and had worked her way up to a senior detective of the Commercial Crimes Division. She was essentially in charge of all art-related investigations in the city of Los Angeles. The investigators went with a gut feeling and decided to make Lazarus the prime suspect, with the collection of her DNA being the very first task. Attaining it through a warrant would have let Lazarus know she was under investigation, so it had to be discreetly collected instead. Within 24 hours of becoming the prime suspect, a coffee cup she discarded while off duty was received by police. A DNA sample was then taken, and it came up as an exact match to the DNA found on Sherry Rasmussen's bite mark. There is a stigma around police interrogation tactics being secretive, and how knowing this information can somehow help the guilty in deceiving their way to freedom. Yet these tactics have been public knowledge since their inception in the 1940s, and the following interrogation is a legitimate testimony into how watching an interrogation is a world apart from being subjected to one. You can know every technique in the book, and each specific strategy and subtle scenario that goes along with it, but ultimately, you have no idea how you're going to react to a specific situation until you're actually in it. With that being said, knowing these tactics can still give an individual some form of advantage with regards to awareness. The investigators knew that their initial confrontation with Lazarus could in no way resemble a traditional interrogation, nor be officially classified as one, and there were two reasons for this. The first was that Stephanie would be wise to the fact that her best option would be to request legal counsel right away and end the procedure immediately. The second was that Stephanie was not about to be read her Miranda rights before being asked questions related to the investigation. A defense team could easily make anything she divulges inadmissible in court. Yet this was classed as a simple discussion between two parties, and the footage that was captured on a hidden camera was able to be submitted as evidence under surveillance footage rather than interrogation footage. The detectives created a ruse, inviting Stephanie to come in and advise them on a case involving stolen art. Knowing they were dealing with one of their own, they rehearsed and prepared for the interview more than anything they had done before. Oh Their my plan God. of attack was to keep the conversation as casual as possible for as long as possible and carefully waited for the key moments to initiate the confrontation. Stephanie, I don't know if you know my partner. Hey, hey. great. Hi. Sir, nice to meet you. How's it going? Good. Moving around. Uh, well, have a seat. 
I don't want to talk about this in the squadron because exactly. I, I don't know who people are listening. That's true. That's and if we go to my side, everybody's yeah. always wondering what everybody okay, else is sure doing. No okay. The first thing the detectives do is set up a compatible tone with a suspect. She has just stepped foot inside an interrogation room, and the detectives negate the negative implications of such an environment through a friendly disposition. Consultative meetings, such as seeking advice over an art theft, can take place anywhere, and the last place detectives would choose to spend more time in would be an interrogation room. The reason they give the suspect for meeting in such an unusual location is to not spread rumors or innuendo, yet the real reason is that all firearms have to be checked in before entering the area, and they needed the suspect to give up her gun without alerting suspicion. Mm. But uh, like we're talking about being business stuff, we've been assigned a case that we've been looking at. Okay. okay. It's a new case, and reviewing the case, there's some notes uh, to see that as far as your name being mentioned. Do oh, you, okay. Do you know John Rutten? Try and imagine for one moment that you savagely murdered a love rival in a jealous rage. Over two decades had passed since the act, then all of a sudden you're brought to an interrogation room and sat directly opposite two senior investigators who bring up the name of the man you committed first degree homicide for. John Rutten? John Rutten? Rutten. The investigators already knew how to say John Rutten's name correctly. The mispronunciation was a simple strategy to see how the suspect would react. Setting aside the element of the murder, John Rutten was the second longest relationship in Stephanie's life, and a psychiatrist later stated that this pause was four times as long as it should have been. She was already being deceptive by acting as if she hadn't thought about that name for so long, giving reason for her prolonged reflection, when in reality, the name John Rutten was engraved in her memory, and even when slightly mispronounced, it would have most likely taken milliseconds for her to realize exactly who the detectives were referring to. Right. Oh yeah, I went to school with him. You did? Yeah. How long did you know him? Gosh, I went to school in, um, let's see, went to UCLA in 1978 I started and, um, you know, met him at school at the dorms. Mm -hmm. um, she says she met him in the dorms, yet left out the fact that they had dated for four years and went on numerous holidays together. Even though she wasn't asked directly, a truthful subject would most often volunteer this information without having to be pressed for it. Were you guys friends, close friends? Yeah, we're very close friends. I yeah. Mean, I mean, what's this all about? Well, it's regarding, it's a case we're working on and it involves John and in there, some of the statements we, we reviewed, uh, you know, there's notes and stuff that he, that he knew you and stuff. Oh yeah, I mean, we, Good friends, um, lived in the dorms for, I lived in the dorms for two years. Um, you guys lived in the same dorm? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, Dykstra. Okay. Were you guys just friends or anything else or? Yeah, we were, we were good friends. Yeah. Was there ever any relationship or anything that developed between you guys? Yeah, I mean, we dated, uh, uh -huh. you know, um, I mean, is, what's this all about? Well, it's relating to, uh, his wife. It's unfortunate that Stephanie's face wasn't captured at this moment because she would have no doubt been immediately struck by the psychological reaction known as fight or flight. Her brain would have just triggered the influx of a specific cocktail of hormones in order to prepare her to either stay and deal with a threat or try and run away to safety. Stephanie chooses to fight. Okay. Okay, did you know her? Not really. I mean, I knew that he got married years ago. Uh-huh, did you ever meet her? God, I don't know. Um, Do you know who she was or anything? Well, I, let me think. God, it's been a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I may have met her. Um, geez. Oh my, like, dude, this is like so... I just gotta pause for a second because put it in sub mode. I gave I, I gave people more than enough time to calm down. It's nine minutes into this. Just I mean, I'll just read a couple comments right here. Other one was where was it at? A guy repeating Los are you good? So that's that's all I need to see, you know? That's it. Just put it in sub mode and we're and we're chilling now. Um yeah, dude. The long pause, right? That's just sus. And then her being like Oh yeah, no, no, we were friends. Yeah, we we're close friends. Yeah, no, we were friends. Yeah, we dated. What's this about? What's this about? What's this about? What is this about? And then she's like, "Gosh, I haven't. This is so. Oh my gosh. Um, this is so many years ago. Gosh. Uh, like it's like. This is so bad. This is this is so. 
This is like one of the most guilty looking ones we I think we've seen. I think. God, it's been a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Um Um I I may have met her. Um jeez. The words, gosh, God, gee, are exclamatory remarks used to express surprise or strong emotion. You will see them used continuously throughout this interrogation, which is the suspect trying to insinuate a vague memory due to a lack of contemplation on the subject matter. She's trying to emit the impression that she would have had no reason to give any further thought to John, or anything related to John, since they stopped seeing each other over two decades ago. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, let me see. Let me ask you. You said you, you dated John. How long did you guys date? I mean, well, are you guys, is this something? As we know, Stephanie is a cop and has been for 25 years. She will be wise to the fact that acting oblivious to the unusual development of the situation will be a glaring red flag in the eyes of the investigators. It's been shown time and again on this channel. Guilty suspects will often try and act naive to a blatant confrontation as a means to avoiding it altogether, whereas truthful subjects will address the confrontation and uh -huh. either refute it, or if it's subtle, want immediate clarification and transparency as to what was being insinuated. I mean, you said that I was going to interview somebody about art and how well, you guys are. Here's, here's, <laughs> I mean, Stephanie, here's the situation: is basically, we, you know, we knew that this when we saw this in the in in this chrono that maybe you know there was some relationship there. That's what the chrono seemed to indicate. The detective now subtly avoids the question altogether, but instead offers a deceptively reassuring response to the suspect. He makes a very sharp switch from the investigative subject matter to the previous topic of workplace rumors. He brings her focus back to the false perception of them being on her side. Stephanie had just asked what was going on, and now he essentially replies with, "We are your friends. We're doing you a favor." And we didn't want to come up to you at your desk and ask those kinds of questions or do anything. You know how up there people can see what's going on if you go into an interview room or people are in there getting oh, supplies. Okay. So we, we wanted to afford you some privacy, some confidentiality okay. to talk about this because we thought it might be, you know, something, you know, you're married to someone else, obviously, and so forth, and that you may not want to, you know, talk about these things in that setting where someone, you know, we don't want the rumor mill or gossip or any of that kind of stuff yeah, to I mean, start. that's fine. I mean... So we're, we, we did this just as, as a means to try and speak to you in okay, just a confidential I mean, just... place where you, you know, where where your business isn't out there for other people in, in well, you know, I mean, your division yeah, to know about. I mean... Whether it be shock or the total reluctance to accept the situation at hand, Stephanie warily accepts the reassuring response without further inquiry into her initial challenge. She instead falls back into her agenda of having a foggy memory with regard to the incriminating contents. You know, God, that's been a million years ago. I mean, you know, um, what year is it now? 2009? I mean, I graduated in 82. 82, mm. yeah. Um, you know, we dated. Um, I dated other guys. I'm sure he dated other girls. Um, mm. Well, let me ask you, <laughs> roughly how long would you, <clears throat> would you say you guys dated? Oh, jeez. Um, I couldn't even say. I mean... Notice how she now goes on to over-explain things that don't require an explanation oh and weren't even God. inquired about. It's Dude. a clear-cut indication of hyper-arousal and a derivative of TMT, also known as terror management theory. The suspect will go off on unrelated tangents as means for gaining momentary relief. Going into detail about trivial things affords her a brief... Wait a second, so... This was in 80... Did they say 86? It's been over 20 years, right? The murder? So... She's gotten away with this for over 20-something years, bro. That right there is, is horrifying. That is disturbing and horrifying. That she's been out there for this many years... I mean, it's like, think about Dex, the show Dexter. Like, cops and those type, like, they have advantages, bro. They know how to cover shit up. Like, if the, if you have a sociopath cop, you know, that could be fucking horrible. Hopefully she didn't do anything else, bro. For gaining momentary relief. Going into detail about trivial things affords her a brief escape from the terrifying reality eventuating before her. This is a very common occurrence in interrogations where the suspect is facing serious charges and psychiatrists believe it to be a subconscious coping mechanism. I started school there in 78. 
Mm -hmm. I started UCLA in 1978. Mm -hmm. I graduated in 82. Um, I don't even remember what year he graduated, if it was a year or two before me. Okay. Um, I think he was a little bit older than I was. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I can't remember if he was born, let's say I was born in 60, 1960. I don't know if he was born in 58 or 59. I mean, I, you know, um, I mean, I knew his parents, I knew his sister, his brother went to Northridge. Bro, this is so hard to watch. Um, um, you know, his sister spent the night at my house before. Obviously, I spent the night at his house before. He probably spent the night at my house before. Um, you know, I, I yeah. yeah, I don't. I, well, correct me if I'm wrong, because from what you're telling me, is you, you guys dated while you were in college together, right? Yeah, and probably after college. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, I can't. Geez. How would you like not remember this? Like, is that believable at all? Like, dude, I can recall like everything. Like, I mean, I obviously I'm not like 50 years old like this, but I'm not gonna forget like dating someone for six years or some shit. Like, all of college and then after college, yeah, you're yeah you're really gonna forget that. You're really gonna that's gonna. Oh, I don't know. What is that? I don't even know. Was it three two? What is it? I don't even think we uh, he she he might have stayed over the house. Like what? He's um. I'm trying to think when I met my husband. I met my husband in, when did I meet Scott? Um, let's see, I was teaching D.A.R.E. because I met Scott when I was teaching D.A.R.E. up in Oregon. But we had long stopped, you know, dating before that. So you um, haven't talked to him for a long time? Oh, I, I think I haven't talked to him in a long time. Um, I couldn't even tell you when the last time I talked to him. Um, I met Scott, I'm thinking in 92 maybe. Um, April of 92 it was Scott being your husband yeah I'm trying to think I was teaching dare let's see what year is this we'll be married I got married in 1996 I think I met Scott in 92 prior to that I couldn't tell you how long I had talked you know talked to John prior to that but since um, you since you met your husband Scott you hadn't talked to him I mean he may have called me uh, once or twice uh -huh. before we got married. Right. Um, you know, geez, I, I lived, in, I moved to see me in 1994 because I lost my house in the earthquake. Oh, really? Um, uh, quite honestly, I probably keep in contact with a few people from the dorms. We, we all, we all lived on the 10th floor. Um, and, um, there's, about three or four people I keep in contact with. There's probably like six or eight of us that were all really close. Mm -hmm. And who are those um, people? Oh, geez. Um, Diana Basta. Um, the people I still keep... I, I haven't been in contact with her in a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, wh wh you know, what's, uh, what's, I mean, what's this all about? I mean... Well, let me ask you that. The suspect challenges the detectives for the second time, and once again the question is avoided, but this time in a more confrontational manner, as the topic is maintained with no reassurance afforded. The detectives are ramping up the pressure in a very subtle, yet highly effective manner. What ended the relationship between you and John? You know, I don't... It was kind of a weird relationship. I mean, we, we, we dated. Um, I can't say that he was my boyfriend. I don't know that he would consider me his girlfriend. Um, we just, we dated, we did things. I played sports in college. He played basketball. His brother played basketball. Um, it, it, we just, you know, it just didn't work out. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. It was like, I went out with other guys, um, saw other guys. I went on lots of vacations, um, you know. And, and once you guys split, were you guys still friends or kind of, uh, you know, problems? I mean, Is it yeah. Friendly, not friendly? No, I don't think it was not friendly. I mean, we were friendly. Um, uh, I know that we went to Hawaii um, at one point. Yeah, I mean, I, you know. And you were saying that. Um, bro, the, it's 2009 now. Had you ever. This fucking, like, freaking out, like, just. Oh, my God. It's, I can't watch this shit. Oh. It's, like, so. If you told an actor to play like a guilty person, this would be like the shit they'd be doing. Like, I mean, I don't know. I, I get. I don't know. I mean, I, it, it's so guilty. You're so guilty, bro. 
Like, you're literally so guilty. It's crazy to think about. You know. And you were it, saying that... It, um, it, it's 2009 now. Had you ever met his wife? I may have. Do you know, do you remember her name or anything? How would you not know that? How would you not know if you met his wife? I'm, seriously, I want an answer from the chat right now. How would you know that? Seriously. Or... Um, um, or what she did for a living or where she worked or anything uh, about her? The suspect was just asked three consecutive questions relating to the victim. She was supposedly in a reflective state during all three of the questions, yet her facial expression completely changed for the third one. This is because she was pretending to be in a state of reflection for the first two questions, as she already knew the answers. Whereas for the third question, she actually was in a state of reflection and was genuinely searching her memory for the correct response. Had you ever met his wife? I may have. Do you know, do you remember her name or anything or? Um, um, the third question is just about say a random name. Just say a name. Uh, like Elizabeth or Robin, Robin or something. No, I don't know. I don't know why. What, what's what? Why? Why do you what, her her name? Why do you even know her name? What are you guys doing? What is this? What are you asking me right now? What is this bag? It's not that hard, bro. To be posed, and her focus is about to switch from pretending to be thinking to actually thinking. Or what she did for a living, or where she worked, or anything uh, about her. Well, I think she. I th I'm gonna say that I think she was a nurse. Um. Man, I can't even remember how he, he said he met her. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, it's been so long ago. Well, let me ask you: Did you go to their wedding? You know? No, I didn't go to their wedding. Um, no, I don't. Did not go to their wedding. Um, couldn't even tell you what year he got married. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's it's been a million years ago. You know, again, I, I mean, what? You know, I, I don't understand why you're talking about some guy I dated a million years ago. Well, do you know what happened to his wife? Yeah, I know she got killed. You wouldn't need to be an expert in body language to recognize the unmitigated terror emanating from the suspect's face at this moment. She had just verbalized the victim's tragic demise for the first time in most likely over two decades. What, um, did, you, what did you hear about that? I, I saw a poster at work. Um, I'm sure I spoke to him about it. Um, I'm sure I talked to him about it? So the whole time they're asking her about this woman, like, oh yeah, I might have met her. And then as soon as they say what happened, she was like, oh yeah, I know she was murdered. Like, wh wh what? Holy shit, dude. Um, This is not feds in four, by the way, because she's been free for 20 plus years. So this is not feds in four. This is the feds got swept like four years in a row and now they're finally got something and it's like, you know, she's down bad. There's an injury. She's, um, she rolled an ankle. Free the plebs. Cause I want us all to coexist. I want the plebs and subs. I want us to all coexist. Right now. In a good way. In a good way. I think I spoke to another friend of his about it. Um, and how did how did you first learn about that? Jeez. <laughs> Someone could have called me. I could have heard it at work. Um, I think at one point there may have been a flyer or something. I know a good friend of his. Um, Were you on the job back then when that happened? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm sure I was on the job. That's why I would have heard about it with the flyer. Um, he had a good friend, Mike, Mike Boldrick, Mike. Mm, um, um, you know, but being that you're kind of used to see uh, John 
you know, was it was everything okay between you guys? I mean, there was never anything uncomfortable or anything between you and her? Um. Eight separate witnesses testified that Stephanie had confronted Sherry at the hospital she worked at, while the two of them were reportedly in an intimate relationship with John. The confrontation was said to have been highly aggressive, and Stephanie had to be escorted off the premises by security. Reports stated that Stephanie was by far the more combative, and even made threats against Sherry's life. Oh yeah, I'm sure I might have met her. Yeah. Oh, now that I think, yeah, I'm sure I did. I must have. Bro, holy fuck. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's God, it's been so many years. I mean, uncomfortable. I mean, I, I can't even, I can't even remember if we had a conversation. I mean, we may have, I may have, I may have seen her at his apartment. You know, geez, how many years ago is that? I don't even know what year she, you know, got killed. Where was his apartment? Notice her passive disposition as she gives the following truthful response. On Roscoe. Okay. Yeah, Roscoe and um, um, east or west of DeSoto, uh, either east or west of DeSoto. Do you know where he moved after, did, did he move after he got married or do you know? Or? Now notice how her disposition switches from passive to frantic as she once again pretends to have a vague memory. Oh. <sighs> I'm sure he did. Did you know where um, he was living or? Somewhere in the valley. Did you ever visit him and his wife? No. No, never no. went out to, you know, get together, dinners, anything I know, of that nature? No, no. Like I said, his sister used to come over. His sister had, had, had come to my place. I knew his, I knew his brother because his brother played basketball at Northridge. Um, in fact, I was just coming across some pictures that I had just scanned. Uh, scanned from um, I take a lot of photos uh -huh. um, like 10,000 and I just did a service where I scanned everything and uh, after his wife died did did you talk to him again or anything yeah I mean I did talk to him mm -hmm. I talked to him probably his parents um, probably some other friends um, you know I'm sure I talked to him. Yeah. Um, but you you don't you're not sure where he moved to after he got married. No idea. I mean, never I, went over to to visit him or. I don't think. I mean, I don't or, think so. I mean, um, I don't know. I don't. I mean, I don't think I did. Um, I mean, I know he lived on Roscoe for a long, long time. Um, after. Uh, John's wife died. I, you said you may have been talking to him. Did uh, your relationship start up again? I would say no. Um, again, can you give me a year? I mean, this well, is like 2009. She, she died in 1986? Yeah, I think it was 86. 1986. Okay. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm faintly remembering that um, I went to Hawaii with my friend Greg. Greg and I got certified for scuba diving. Um, and I'm thinking that John met us there, meaning Greg and I. Um, after he after he got uh, married or whatever, were you, were you dating anybody? In hmm. particular? Or, or, and or that was what? Steady? What year? 1986, you said? I think he got married he got, yeah, in around 85, 86, something like that. Were you seeing anyone seriously? or? I couldn't say. Um, geez, I'm trying to think. I mean, um, you know, I dated a fireman. Randy may have dated a gal that Mike was dating. And that, and then Mike, Randy broke up with that gal. I couldn't even tell you the gal's name, if I'm even thinking of the story right. And then I started dating Randy. Yeah. I, you know, so again, I mean, not like I was a huge floozy or anything, but... No. As far as you recall, after John's wife died, did you start a relationship again with, with John or dating casually or anything like that? Dude, she thought she was coming in. Think about this. She thought she was coming in to talk about paintings. Now she's being asked all these questions about this murder, basically, 
and she's just sitting here answering them. Like, why? If you wouldn't, you be sitting there like, "Yo, what is this? What are you guys asking me right now? What does this have to do with paintings?" Like I said, he met Greg and I in Hawaii. Um, you know, uh, what island did we go to? I think the big island in Kauai. I mean, when, when you heard about uh, John's wife being killed, I mean, what was your, what was your reaction? I mean, when did, you, you thought you heard about what, through a friend or in a, in a bulletin or Either something? Either a, a friend or a bulletin. Um, I obviously, I mean, I called, I called the family. Um, I, I, I called maybe some of his friends that, that, that I knew. And I mean, obviously it's shock if you're, if I heard it at work, you know, um, which I may have, I, I faintly remember a bulletin going around, you know. Um, do, do you know what the circumstances were regarding her death? Mm. Geez, oh, let me think back. Um, geez, I don't know if it was, you know, if it was a burglary or something. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's been so many years. I, I mean, I can faintly think that I may have saw a flyer yeah. Uh, may have had her picture on it, you know, um, I may, that's why I say, if somebody had called me, I may not have known what her last name was. I may have, I mean, maybe if you told me I would remember it. Do um, you remember you know, the first name? <sighs> Shelly, um, Sherry, I don't know, something maybe, you know, um, like I said, it's been so many years and. Um, from all the years, as far as you can remember it. You don't do you remember ever talking to her just well as you say, i said earlier you know i, I mean i may have and i'm and now i'm thinking i put me i may have gone to her and say hey you know what you know what is he dating you he's but he's bothering me um and so i'm thinking that we had a conversation about that um one or two maybe I, I, you know I, it could have been three i don't want to say i had three conversations with her oh. like, I, at, I like at her work or at their at their house or no i'm thinking that i you know he obviously must have told me where she worked i'm thinking it was a hospital somewhere in la and i just i mean i could have been again what year was that where was i working um Ninety two or ninety three, there was a big earthquake. No, when was a big earthquake? April of ninety two, because I was te I, I stopped teaching Dare. I think I stopped teaching Dare sometime in ninety two. When you said like, hey, you know, he's calling me, he needs to knock it off or what have you. I mean, was that was that civil? Was there? I mean, oh yeah, it... no, there was not. I don't think there was anything. It was if the conversation lasted. A, a, a few minutes so I can't even remember and what is it like you know we went out to lunch or anything right but there was but, no like arguments or well, fights I, I or it didn't so. get heated or anything like not that not that I recall no I mean would, I would think that would stand out I would think now again that's not standing out in my mind um, you know so you didn't have any problems with her then no you didn't have any issues with her no I mean but let, me, <laughs> let me ask you it seems like you didn't have any issue now did she have an issue with you as far as oh. because now you're telling her hey you know have to stop calling us you know she's like hey. you know you figure she'd be threatened oh. by you you know i i don't know i mean from what you remember as far as when you talked to her maybe you didn't take it as serious <laughs> but maybe you know did she if she was bugging I mean, like was she throwing things at me or something or well, no, just you know as far as you're trying to explain like hey have them stop calling me you know stop playing games you know i, I tell you it, it, yeah if the conversation i couldn't even tell you how long the conversation if you said did it last a half an hour did it last three minutes did it last 20 minutes i can't even remember it's been so long ago so you would have gone if it was en route to work you more than likely you would have gone to her work and had this discussion with her i mean that's sounding familiar uh -huh. i mean that's now that you guys are bringing this stuff up um i mean it sound that sounds familiar um, but again i mean you know I, uh, what's I mean what's this got to do with me dating him and you know her getting killed I mean I I don't you know I don't have anything to do with it and you got something that's somebody said you know 
whatever. I mean, well, like we said, we, j we just literally got this the other day, and, and you're going through it. Yeah. And you see, and you saw me say, your oh, name. Well, it's Nick's next door. Right. And, <laughs> and so, you know, I mean, obviously, it's like we recognize yeah. the name, and we know that, you know, you work yeah. next door to us. And so we're trying to get some background. We're trying to figure this out. I mean, this is from a long time ago. Oh, I know. And you know, and, and, and things have been kind of slow for us. And so, you know, Chief Beck has said, hey, you know, I want you guys working. I don't want you just sitting around reading the paper. Yeah. So he's kind of pushing some older cases out even to the guys that yeah. work active cases because, you know, and so we see this and we're just like, oh, yeah. well, you know, we want to talk to you about it. But of course, the only reason we did it here is because we're getting into some pretty personal stuff no, in I your relationship. You know, my I, my and, husband's yeah. on the job, yeah. and, and, and we've and so been we married. You know, we don't want to take the risk. We don't want to take the risk in one of those interview rooms, no, and even when the door closes, someone's going to get no. supplies and see us on a monitor, or hears yeah. or whatever. No, I appreciate it. I mean, I you know, appreciate. Like I said, that's where people go when there's orals. You know, when they're doing orals, yeah. guys will go in there and oh, try and watch. And like, I, oh, what are the answers to the questions? You know, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, so so we just we just want to afford you the most privacy and confidentiality we could. No, I appreciate. Like I said, I mean, this goes way back, and I mean, it was very sad. You know, obviously, um, I I haven't. I, you know, I when we were in college, some of us would go down to his house in San Diego. I, I went down to his house with him. I made detective. Dude, I think in ninety. This guy who makes these videos puts the funniest shit. Like, I love that he just like makes fun of the uh, the the murderers. Like he makes fun of them. This would be like ra another random tangent. Oh, San Diego was fun. Like he, he just like, I, I, I fuck with that, bro. Because dude, fuck these people. Fuck the school shooter. All these people deserve to get fucking made fun of, ridiculed, laughed at, fucking roasted. Everything they deserve, everything. They do. I mean, you're a fucking murderer. You bit a woman who you brutally murdered, you bit her body after she was dead? How could you do it? How, how? How could you you be a human being and do that to somebody? I know her breasts smell horrible. Yeah, she, she gives me the vibe of like the teacher who drank too much coffee vibes. You know what I mean? When you got a teacher who drinks too much coffee and then they can breathe near you. Those are the vibes I'm getting from her. Um, mixed in with maybe cigarettes. Maybe. Three. I made detective, I think, in 93. 93. Let me get back uh, to... As far as when you said that uh, John was calling you to to see you, and during that time you felt that he was felt he was either seeing her, was he engaged or married? Did, did you know? I don't remember. I, you know, I don't know. Uh huh. Um, I, uh, ever, well, it, let's it, see. My it, husband. But uh, during that time that you were seeing John, uh, you know, was he acting kind of you know, kind of squirrely or kind of sneaking around when he'd hook up with you or anything like that? To make you think, hey, you may, yeah, this oh, guy he probably is. was. I mean, well, after he hooked up with uh, with Sherry, do you know uh, where they were living? No, you asked me that already, uh -huh. and I said, well, obviously they were living in Van Nuys Division. Yeah. <laughs> um, I may have known. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, again, I, you know, did he ever give me the address? I, I, maybe, you know, I don't remember. I mean, I don't know. Because the only reason I'm asking you again is because as we've been talking, I know some stuff has come to you because you're like, oh, it's like you know, so. I don't think I've ever gone there. That's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't want to say, no, I've never gone there. And then you say, oh, I was at a party. Because I, 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 I don't, you know, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, like I said, we've got these friends. We have different, we have parties. Because I know you, you went to talk to her. Uh, Meanwhile, they're talking to her knowing, oh, her DNA literally matches up to the bite marks on the dead lady. They already know this shit. They already know. At the hospital, uh, regarding this issue with John, to, you know, kind of like, hey, you know, what's going to happen here with this thing? But would this ever have followed up to her house when you went to talk to her to say, hey, you know what? I, I don't even know that I knew where they lived. I, you know, that's what I'm saying. I don't, 
if I knew where they lived and I'd been there, if it was for something social, I I would I'm, I'm and I can't see how many times I I saw her face to face. You know, he lived on uh -huh. Roscoe. Did I ever see her there? I don't know. I mean, I may have seen her at his apartment on Roscoe. Mm -hmm. I may have met her there. I, you know, I, I mean. But you didn't have any issues with her, right? No, I mean, you know, obviously, if he was dating me and dating her, I probably said, "Hey, pick or something," you know, fair. you know, back That's then. Um, I mean, would you remember if she snapped on you and just like, "Hey, man, it's my man," you know, you get it, leave him alone, you know, blah blah blah, that kind of stuff. You know. I mean, would you remember an incident like that? I mean, because that would be like what? Well, you know, and maybe that happened. I mean. Uh, uh, Gosh, I, you know. What? You're just, everything she saw, maybe that happened. I, I, I don't know. Fuck it. Just everything just might have happened. Dude. Again, when we watch this, I can't tell if they're dumb or if it's really just the pressure of the moment. I just can't tell, bro. Hey, Hanky, 34 months. Thank you, bro. It's been so long ago. I, you know, I just, I mean, that's not ringing a bell. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, because the times I've seen you around at our office. I'm crazy. You know, but you're always <laughs> you know. kind of like real, I mean, you seem kind of bubbly. Oh, I'm, pr I'm you know, people think I'm really hyper. Um, but I can, I mean, I can get, I can get upset. You know, and, and and then I forget five seconds later. You know, you know how guys razz you, and you go, ah, you know. Um, what? I mean, I've done that in the office, you know. But it's like, huh? and then I'm, you know, and then You've I'm. You've done what? You know, yeah. uh, you know. I, I mean, people Water think. Water under the bridge. Yeah, I mean, it's like people think I'm crazy, and then they think I'm crazy at home, and I'm, you know, more. I'm I'm a hyper person at work. I'm, you know, I, I enjoy my job. I get excited. I, you know. Um, I, I enjoy the job. I've always enjoyed the job. Okay. And then the guys that lived across from me, um, Jim Jaskell and Roy Sakabu, Sakabu, something like that. Well, one of the concerns I had is looking at some of the notes is uh, some of Sherry's friends said that you and her were having a problem <laughs> because of the John situation. <laughs> well... Number one, I don't know who her friends are, because um, again, I don't, I don't. Why is the chat saying "suck a boob"? I would love to suck a boob right now. I think I might suck a boob after this stream, but I'm just saying, like, why is everyone saying "suck a boob"? Did she say "suck a boob"? You and her were having a problem because. Of <laughs> I'm not that, sucking I'm Jake's boob. Shut notes. up. Boo, suck a boob. Um, Jim Jaskell and. Roy Suckaboo, Suckaboo, something like that. Roy Suckaboo! Well, one of the concerns I had is looking at some of the notes is uh, some of Sherry's friends said that. Los, you're looking handsome? Hey, man, problem. thank you, bro. I'm going to mod you. <laughs> because of the John. Appreciate situation. you, bro. <laughs> well, number one, I don't know who her friends are. Because, um, again, I don't. I don't recall if he did tell me where he met her i don't know even who these friends are a problem like i said if i spoke to her i mean i'll go on as far as the limb and i don't even want to say i spoke to her five times because that's probably not even true I, I i can't even remember um dude it yet. literally started with oh i might have met her oh we might have we might have met oh we might have talked once yeah, we might have talked once or twice, maybe three times. I don't know. Maybe five times. It's like, yeah, I might have went over her house. Yeah, no, I might have bit her, but that was, that was enough. That was, we were just playing around. I know, I remember now because it was a party and I bit her. Yeah, I remember, like, what? Again, did I meet him at her plate when he, you know, he lived on Roscoe for, I think, uh, quite a while, but I couldn't tell you how long he lived on Roscoe. And the only reason I remember the place now is because it's like a huge dope, dope place now where they, you know, it, it may have been back then, but, you know, maybe we didn't know back then. Yeah. Um, I could have met her there. I could have, you know. Uh, but what they're, 
you know, I don't even know that I met any of their friends. I, I, you know, I don't, I, I, I can't say that. I don't know that that's a true statement. Well, that's what I'm reading is that you guys have problems with each other and words are being exchanged and it's all relating to John. <laughs> you so. know what? I, 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 I just, I can't say. You can't say? No, I, that, that doesn't even ring a bell. But I mean. I mean, it seemed like, yeah, you would recall something if somebody's I would, going I would off think, on you, right? I would think. I mean, I would think. From what you're telling me is when you guys met at the hospital, uh, I mean, you guys talked, but it wasn't, from what you recall, confrontational so. from either side? I, I mean, I'm trying to, you know, turn my memory back, you know, and I'm trying, I can't even, I can't even picture the, you know, picture the the conversation i mean i can't even picture the conversation well let me ask you i mean at the hospital it never got to the point where people are going hey hey you know go to everybody go to your own corner type of thing i don't think so nothing like that i don't think so okay. i mean i really don't i mean if you if, you know if you say people said that that's not ringing a bell to me at all i mean it's not i mean that that's not ringing a bell was there to ever, me at all was there ever a time when you and sherry were talking and john had to maybe go like hey you guys relax you know or anything like that think so about you know ever going to a house and having a dispute like that you know I'm just if I met her ever at his apartment <clears throat> maybe I mean maybe we could have met it I could have met at her apartment I'm thinking that the hospital thing that sounds familiar that I, I met her there I just can't say that I've ever again was I there with other people I don't I, I, it, I don't know um, I don't think I ever met her there or him there um, meaning one or the other I don't think so well, I guess basically what I'm asking is you know were you ever welcome to the house like you know hey oh come over yeah come on over I'm in a barbecue you know a dinner party Christmas party whatever you know, I, I don't know no, don't. I'm just trying to think you know like I said because there were so many of us that I have 10,000 pictures, okay? I'm a picture nut. Mm -hmm. Let me ask, when you were seeing John, would you, uh, I take it he would pick you up in his car, you'd go in her, you know, your car, things of that nature, when you guys would go out? Well, yeah, I mean. Do you remember what he, what he drove? Well, I know at one time he drove either a 240 or 260Z. <laughs> Any other cars that stand out in your mind? Hmm. <laughs> what the? F First of all, if you need a tug break, um, this should have snapped you right out of it. Cause this got my shit inverted right now, bro. I'm fucking inverted as fuck right now. Well, not really. But metaphorically, this is bad. Uh, hold on. Wait. Yo! No, bro. See, I free the plebs and I got dudes here saying, hold on, keep it paused. Dude, if you could even get movement from this still frame. You deserve to be, you deserve to be behind bars. You deserve to be locked up for life. For life. You need to be incarcerated. <clears throat> All right, what are we doing? Let's, let's go. I don't know how long you drove that 240 or 260Z for. Um, and the only reason I say that is because I think I may have a picture of it. Um, with him in it. Um, what kind of car did you have back then? Let's see. What year? Or are you like one of those young cops that's like, oh, I got a paycheck and bought a new car? Oh, no, no, no. I've only had like a few cars in my whole life. So what'd you have when you came on the job? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, my first car was a 68 Chevelle. Well... <laughs> Like I said, dude, I'm rem dude, come on, bro. I'm always gonna remember my cars. Like, how do you not remember your own car, bro? That shouldn't be like a, mm, what did I drive? 
What did I drive? Did I drive a car? I think I might have used a unicycle. I, 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 for... What was it? It's 86 right now? 87? I think I might have rollerbladed for a few years there. Again, though, I don't know, though. I couldn't tell. I... This is so ass. This is so bad. We were looking at the gate, and, you know, we... Not funny plus ratio. Yeah, you're banned, dude. Dude, you're just banned. It's not even like a like oh like it's no you're banned, bro. That literally was funny. That literally was funny. Like people were saying LMAO. If it wasn't funny, why would they say LMAO? For fun? Just I'm laughing at you. Yeah, you're banned too, bro. Get the fuck out of here, bro. We felt bad? <laughs> you're right, you're right, you're right. The, so now you're trying to convince me that you type LMAO in the chat because you feel bad? You know how sad that is? Why do you even want to paint me as that? Like you spend your time in here watching me. Why would you even want to put that thought into someone's mind? That's fucked up, dude. That's literally fucked up, bro. That's like you're basically saying like I'm in like the Truman Show or something like I'm just this isn't real like this is just you're an asshole bro Seriously, you're actually an asshole for that. I read the notes as far as from uh, Sherry's friend saying you you guys had problems or words and they got heated. You guys ever thought you were in the Truman Show by the way like has that ever like crossed your mind? No. You know, the reason we're asking you is they had mentioned that an incident at her work had occurred, and they've also told us that an incident at her house occurred. You know what? And this is at her house <laughs> during the period of time that they're married. <laughs> That's just not sounding familiar at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know what? I. That's just not sound. I, I, again, if someone says that I was at her house and I had an incident with her, I, I, you know, I, that just doesn't sound. I, 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 you know, was John there? Did John say this happened because, and other people were there? I, I, I just, I don't recall. I mean, it just doesn't sound, you know, familiar. And this is an incident where you showed up. You weren't supposed to show up, and things got heated. At his house. That I, you know, I that just doesn't sound familiar. I mean, I no. I, you know, it's not sounding familiar. So, not at all. Why would you not be like, fuck no, hell no, what the fuck? Like I said, I showed up to the hospital, and I was, you know, it, 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 the the argument might have gotten heated. I don't remember. It was a long time ago, uh. But I never went to their house on a now. No, no, I don't even know where they live. Like what? Now you're saying not familiar because it's just something well, you remember or it's well, just. Well, you know what? I would have then I'd have to say I don't remember because I don't remember. I it, that doesn't sound familiar. I. I mean, would you, you remember know, something like that in your life? If well, I would think, but sort of drama involving you know the other woman type of thing. Well, sure. Did you ever uh, fight with her? You mean like we fought? Yeah. Did you ever yeah. duke it out with her? No, I don't think so. I mean, you what? Oh my fucking God. play that back, bro. Fought? Yeah. Did you ever yeah. duke it out with her? No, I don't think so. I mean, well, you'd remember that, right? That would be pretty. Yeah, I would think so. I pretty mean, specific. You know, yeah, like I said, I mean, dramatic. obviously, yeah, I, you know, I mean, it just doesn't sound familiar. I mean. I mean, what are they saying? So I, I, I fought with her, so, so now I'm, I mean, I, 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 I'm get, getting the jump, the leap. Excuse me, I haven't eaten. Um, they're saying, okay, I fought with her, so I must have killed her. 
This is known in psychology as reductio ad absurdum, or appeal to extremes. It's a form of argument that attempts to disprove a statement by showing that it leads to an absurd or impractical conclusion. I mean, come on. I mean, that's, you know, I, I don't even know who these people are. I, I can't even say I met any of these people. I mean, that's, it's insane. Would it be something you would remember? I mean, because it's, I don't know if any other intense incidents in your life that have occurred, I mean, you'd recall those, right? I mean, well, like a use of force at work or car crash, something you're involved in, you'd be like, yeah, I remember. You would think I would remember. I mean, I would think if it was something that crazy, I mean, I, I can't say, you say, how many fights have you gotten into, you know, yeah. in your life? You know, I mean, a few at work. Well, fights um, at work are kind of you know, different because we've all had uses of force or whatever. But well, I, mean, I haven't it, even had even a lot of those. I mean, right, but you know, if you're if you're actually, you know, I mean, I played like if if Dan and I got mad at each other and we threw blows in the squad room. I mean, 20 years later, I, I would remember it. I mean, I would think I would remember it, but that's unique. that's what I'm saying. That's not sounding familiar to me at all. I'm looking at the notes, and these people are kind of. I mean, they're pointing the finger at you. <laughs> well, and I mean. That's not ringing a bell to me, so, you know, I don't know, you know, it's, uh, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, that just sounds crazy to me. Yeah, so you, offhand, you don't recall ever going into her house and having words and physically, you know, no, attacking I mean, her, her attacking you? No. Nothing like that? No, I mean, that's, no. Nothing? No. No. Not at all. Well, on some of the, uh, on this case, you know, this is occurred in 86, right? Uh, detectives processed the scene, things of that nature. Uh, they did fingerprints and all that stuff. You know, the, well, you know the standard mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, you've been doing this longer than I have. Uh, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I got 26 years on, <laughs> yeah. going on 26. 19, so. <laughs> but, you know, as they processed everything, uh, they did the best they could at that time, and they looked at a lot of a lot of people and different things in this case. And you're right. I mean, if you guys are claiming that I'm a suspect, then you know I, I got a problem with you know with that. Okay. Okay. So, you know, if you're if you're doing this as an interrogation, you're saying, hey, I'm a suspect. Well, I, now I got a problem with you know now you're accusing me of this. Is that what you're is that what you're saying? We're trying to figure out what happened, Stephanie. Uh, well, I'm I was you know. I'm just saying, you know, do I need to get a lawyer if you're accusing me of I this? I mean, you know. You don't have to, I mean, you know, I'm just, you're here of your own free will. I mean, no, you, you well, I, I know, but I mean. I mean you know you're not, you're not under arrest. You can walk out You can you leave whenever you like. Well, but, you know, I, I, I'm trying <coughs> to give you some background of, you know, how I knew him. And now you're telling me that some somebody's saying that we had this big old fight and I don't even know what you're talking about, um, you know, and I don't want to, you know, get in trouble for something that I didn't even do or you're saying I did something. Okay. Yeah, we understand. I mean, how would you guys like it if the tables were turned on you? I understand. No, um, no that's what we're telling you. I mean, you're free to go whenever you want. If, if this makes you uncomfortable and you want to... Well, you now you're starting leave. to make me uncomfortable. The thing is, I mean, detectives did what they could at that time on the crime scene. Okay? And the burglary thing you're talking about, that is an angle that they looked at. I go, but now we're Yo, put it in sub mode and time out anyone spamming cut paste again i don't know why we have to get to this point where it's just you know no one not talking about the video you're just sitting here spamming and it's mostly plebs doing it and if you're a sub and you're joining in on this that's just weird bro like that's just weird bro that's just weird bro looking at everything else on the case because nobody was ever arrested on the case I, I don't know that or not okay now what we'd like to do is obviously you know about all the dna stuff and things of the nature that you know gets done on cases nowadays oh shit you know if we asked you for a, a dna swab would you be willing to give us one maybe because <laughs> now 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 yeah, because now, now i'm thinking i probably need to talk to a lawyer okay i mean I, because I know how this stuff works, okay? Don't get me wrong. You're right. I have been doing this a long time. Yeah. And I, and I wish I had been recording this because, because now it sounds like, you know, there's, you know, you're selling these people, say I'm fighting with her, and now it sounds like you're trying to, you know, I've been doing this a long time. Yeah, we know. Okay? 
And it, and now it almost sounds like you're trying to pin something on me. No, now I, I got that sense. Well, what it gets to on these on these cases, and you know it as well as I do, our job is to identify and eliminate suspects. I can't believe this. So if we ask you to the point to give us a DNA sample, a buccal swab, so we can identify or eliminate you, would you be willing to do that? Maybe. Because well, I know this. I, 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 I well, That's where we're at, too. I mean, because right now, from looking at the evidence, it's, you know, possible we may have some DNA at the location. That's great. And we're going to do what we can to try to put this thing together. And your name's in the book. These people are pointing at you for whatever reason. <laughs> I don't know why. And that's just crazy. I mean, that's just, that's absolutely crazy. And it would be irresponsible on our part not to look at it. I know. You guys have to do your job. And, and I guess I'm going to have to contact somebody. So... That's fair. I mean, because I, I know how this stuff works. Sure. I mean, I, 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 I just can't believe it. That's, I, I mean, we, we understand that. I mean, if we were in your position, I mean, we would feel the same way. I, I just can't even believe it. I mean, it's just, I, I mean, I'm shocked. I'm really shocked that somebody would be blame, saying that I did this. I mean, we had a fight, and so I went and killed her. I mean, come on. Well, That's... Okay. All right. Well, thanks for giving me the courtesy. I wish I... Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. All right, Stephanie, take care. All right. This is absolutely crazy. Let's see, Stephanie. This is insane. Okay. Give me one second. She arrested? Okay. Stephanie, you know you have the right to remain silent. Do you understand? Yes. Anything you say may be used against you in court. Do you understand? Yes. You have the right to the presence of an attorney before and during any question. Do you understand? Yes. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you free of charge before any questioning if you want. Do you understand? Yes. Do you want to talk to us right now? No. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. This then. is crazy. Okay. This yeah, is so. I'm like I'm like in shock. I'm totally in shock. Bro, you know that if she was actually free to go, then she would have left the fucking country, bro. She would have left the country, bro. Wouldn't wouldn't you have? You're basically fucked. You'd have to leave. We are back on the record in People versus Lazarus. Shortly before noon, the uh, jury announced they have a verdict. We will take the verdict this time. People of the state of California versus Stephanie Eileen Lazarus. Case number BA 357423. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Stephanie Eileen Lazarus, guilty of the crime of murder of Sherry Rasmussen in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony, as charged in count one of the information. We further find the murder was of the first degree. Your Honor, I'm John Rutten. Thank you for the opportunity to speak during this hearing. Um, there are really no words that can describe the loss of Sherry and the whole of, the, of this experience, so it makes no sense to talk very long. It suffices to say that the Rasmussen family, my family, and Stephanie's family have been thrust into a bizarre world of disbelief and indescribable sadness. Sherry Rasmussen had a profound impact on so many people. I was proud that she agreed to be my wife. Wow. It was impossible not to notice Sherry when she entered a room. To me, her physical presence was startling. I can clearly remember the first moment I laid eyes on her. Sherry Rasmussen was a physical presence, and my heart still races when I look at pictures of her. But Sherry was extraordinary, more for who she was than the way she looked. She was a hard worker, a consummate professional, a leader, a diplomat, forgiving, tough and a kid at heart. Cherry's loss, the way she died, and the trial 25 years after her death 
has had a profound impact on many, many others. The effects are broad and span a generation, creating pain for those whose lives should have never been touched by this tragic event. Again, words are feeble tools for describing these impacts, but there are so many moments and so very many tears, and the fact that Sherry's death occurred because she met and married me brings me to my knees. Stephanie Lazarus was sentenced to 27 years to life for the murder of Sherry Rasmussen. She is currently being held inside the maximum security unit of the Central California Women's Facility. Any other cars that stand out in your mind? Mm. <laughs> mm. Bro, this is... Nah, this is some scary shit, bro. Mm. This is some scary shit right now. Fuck this. Listen, dude. <laughs> Listen, bro. Hey, we got some money to play with on here. <laughs>